Hey everybody, I want to get into some of the service provider configuration. So I just booted up this lab. It's on its way up right now. I've got four XR routers in the middle here, two XE routers, and three iOS routers that are connected at customer sites. Customer site one, customer site two, customer site three. This is going to be my provider core in the middle. So the service provider core is here in the middle, and I got a mix of iOS XR and a mix of iOS XE, as I just mentioned. And I'm booting it up, and XRV 9K takes a little while to boot up, so I'm waiting on these to get done. It's good to standardize on your east and west interfaces around a ring, starting with node 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1 and 0 to 1. So it's really nice. You can do reuse of your iOS XR code when you're configuring interfaces. The least amount of changes possible is the least amount of errors. It's good to script your configs. So I'm going to pre-configure some of these things. And then you can easily replicate the configs. Uh, we'll use a 10 dot address space in the core. So, and before we get too far into scripting these configs, let's see where our routers are in the boot up process. Okay. Okay, yeah. So they are at their user prompt, username prompt. So this is what iOS XR looks like when it first boots up. You have a it's prompting for an administrative user dialog. It's telling you there's no root system username configured and you need to configure a root system username. So this is how iOS XR boots up from factory default. Okay, so it's asking for a username, C-I-S-C-O, C-I-S-C-O for the password. It won't allow that. It's got to be six characters, C-I-S-C-O-1, C-I-S-C-O-1. You have to confirm. So I've copied it up here, and I like to just copy and paste to log in. This is what iOS XR looks like after it's been booted up from factory default. This is the prompt. Some of this is a four column prompt. Okay, there's four columns in here, and some of these columns do not mean anything in the, the ASR 9000 platform. In the CRS platform, the carrier routing system, where they have something known as secure domain routers, and you can actually assign hardware to certain uh, virtual routers. One of these columns will take on a different identity to represent, I, I believe, that separate SDR virtual router. But this is XRV9K software. Uh, we don't even have actual hardware emulation, or excuse me, it, you don't have real hardware in a in a lab environment, in a, a virtual router environment like this. So some of these columns won't won't really change because we don't have different line cards. If we had different line cards, then I think it's the second column would change from zero to one to two and to three. And then it's this fourth column, I think would be the port on that line card. Okay, so admin show uh, platform is how you look at line cards and processors. Again, this is XRV 9000 and it's an emulated line, ca line card, an XRV9000 and an emulated route processor. All right, so show IP interface brief, uh, show IPv4 interface brief. Yeah, uh, in XRV, you have to say IPv4. So anyway, these are the, the actual interfaces that we have to work with. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0
So we've booted up the router, we've given it a username and password. Like I said, it's nice to script your configs. I want to number the core real quick. Um, I need one, two, three, four subnets. I'm going to use slash 30s just on these point-to-point -point links. And I'm going to use slash 32s on the loopbacks of these four routers. So for my slash 30, um, I think I'll just go with 10, 10, 10. Uh, counting by fours on the uh, the the thirty the slash thirty bit boundary zero four eight twelve and sixteen those are going to be my subnets for one two three or excuse me one two three four links on second thought I think I'll use ten ten one. And for the loopbacks, I think I'll use 10, 10, 0. So XR1 will be 10, 10, 0, 1. Okay, I'll set up my address space like that just for loopbacks and the transit links. Okay, so let's go with this. 10, 10, 0, 0, slash 24 is my loopbacks. 10, 10, 0, 1 is XR1. Dot 2 is XR2. Dot 3 is XR3. Dot 4 is XR4. And my transit links will be 10, 10, 1, slash, uh, dot 0, slash 30, XR1 to XR2. Then XR2 to XR3, XR3 to XR4, and XR4 back to XR1. All right, so we're going to start with that. So let's put that in here. It's always good to start with the lowest number first as you go around. In XRV, you can use a slash notation. All right, so it's nice. Um, and that'll be port zero, which is received on port one of XR2. So it'd be like that dot two. Okay, I've gone through putting all the interfaces and their IP addresses in their uh, correct places, so I think, <laughs> and you put the word commit at the end of it in XRV, or excuse me, in iOS XR, you need to put the word commit in order to make a configuration go into play. So let's try this. On XR router one, XR dash one, paste that in there. So there we go. Show config will tell you what the config is that's about to go into play. It is not in play yet. Matter of fact, if you type exit, exit, it tells you there's uncommitted changes that are found. Would you like to commit them before exiting? If you say cancel, if you just if you just hit enter, the answer that's in brackets is the default answer. So you can say yes, no, or cancel, and cancel is already selected. So if you, if I hit enter, it just cancels out the the exit font action and it puts you back where you were. So show config again is a way to see the pending change, um, or show commit changes. Uh, difference tells you pluses and minuses. Plus means it's about to add this. Plus means it's going to add this. Minus means it's going to remove this. So by default, interfaces are shut down. And so you're adding configuration where the pluses are and you're removing configuration where the minuses are. Okay, so let's go ahead and commit this. There we go. We see some interfaces come up. Show IPv4 interface brief. And there we go. So we have a few interfaces there. Um, we can start pinging in XR. If you use count, it's equivalent to what iOS used for the word repeat. So let's get that pinging. Let's go over here to XR2. 
let's put this in place. And when we paste that, I'm thinking these pings are going to up. Oh, there we go. So we got pings that came through. So we got that link up and running. This one right across here at the top. All right, so let's paste these other configurations into these routers. Oh, I got to log back in. I'll paste that in there. And I think I'm still, okay, I'm still logged into that one. So XR3 and XR4. Oh, let's commit that. Let's put this into place. Let's commit that. Show. Show IPv4 interface brief. Show ARP. So let's ping some of these distant IP addresses. Uh, that would be dot nine. And also dot 12, uh, no 13 and uh, 14 is the other side. So show ARP. So we have ARP entries learned. All right, so this is good. So show routes. We see our directly connected routes and our local uh, IP address, our slash 32 is our local address. C is the connected route. So you could say show route connected and it only shows the connected. Can we show route local? Sure can. All right. And so there we go. We have two connected routes and, and XR, you can type show route or you can type show IPv4 route, uh, excuse me, show route IPv4, a couple different ways to do it in XR. So we have these four links up and IP addresses configured on them.